Hi folks, this is Ryan Adams. I am a senior near field engineer with Microsoft. Today I wanted to take a look at buffer pool extensions and see how we can implement this and kind of inspect some of the settings around buffer pool extensions. It's a very simple feature. Uh, came out in SQL Server 2014, so it's been around for a while. Very simple to implement. Uh, the general idea behind a buffer pool extension is in a lot of our servers these days, we have a limited amount of memory that we can work with. But what happens when our databases outgrow that, which is very common, outgrow the size of memory that we have, and we're not able to cache that and get that speed out of memory anymore. And what this does is it allows me to take an SSD drive, extend the buffer pool onto the SSD drive, that way I can have a larger buffer pool at a faster speed. And of course, the SSD drive is not as fast as the actual memory itself, but it allows us to cache a little bit more than what we used to be able to do. So we're going to start off here by taking a look at this DMV here, uh, sys DMOS buffer pool extension configuration. And what we're going to do is just inspect the configuration a little bit to see what it looks like. So we've got a few things here. Um, the first thing you're going to notice in our state description here is the buffer pool extension has been disabled. So we haven't turned it on yet, so there's not a lot to look at. And we'll come back and look at this once we've turned it on. We've also got a path here that we'll be able to take a look at. We'll be able to take a look at the current size in kilobytes, and then we've added a column here to convert the KB into gigs so we can get a better idea of how big that is. It's a little bit easier to look at. So exactly how do we turn this stuff on? So for me, I'm running on a virtual machine. It's got 5 gig of RAM in it. And if the entire database and everything is able to fit into RAM, then it's never going to go into the buffer pool extension. So in order to help us simulate that occurring, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go in, change my max server memory down to 2 gig. That way we can kind of overflow that a little bit easier than if I'd had the whole 5 gig. Now buffer pool extensions, for whatever reason, uh, does not, if I were to go here and just turn it on real quick, I'll, I'll explain this in just a second, but I just want to show you the error that we're going to get. Even though I changed down to 2 gig, sometimes this guy will come back and he still sees the old server memory size. And he doesn't typically like that. Um, and so sometimes, and it's kind of hit and miss, whether we have to do that, we'll actually have to restart SQL Server. We got lucky this time, we didn't have to restart SQL Server. Uh, so we're kind of good there. And so all I've done is I've gone in and uh, done an alter server configuration. So it's a new alter server config parameter that we have called set buffer pool extension on. And there's a few different pieces that we're going to give to it. So the first thing we're going to do to this is take a look at the file name. We have to provide a file name parameter here, and this is the file name. Now the extension.bpe is required. You cannot use any other extension other than .bpe. And we just put it on a drive. Now obviously, I'm on a test box here, so putting it on the C drive is not where you want to do that. You'd want to put it on an SSD drive. If you put this on the OS drive, the local drive, or any other drive that is the same IO subsystem that you have for your regular database files, you're not doing yourself justice you're not going to gain anything. The whole idea is to put this on faster storage so that we can pull that data out. The other thing we get to decide here too is the size. So obviously I've chosen to give this 2 gig. There is a maximum size and a minimum size that you can do this for. The minimum size is whatever max server memory is set for. So I set mine for 2 gig. If I were to try and set this here for less than 2 gig, we get an error. It has to be 2 gig or larger. The maximum amount of memory we can give it is 32 times the max server memory amount. This is as large as we can go. So let's go ahead and run this and turn buffer pool extension on. Now, before I kick this off, you notice I put this in the ctemp folder. Let's go take a look at that folder. And you'll see I've just got some backups of some test databases and things like that, AdventureWorks and Wide World Importers and some things like that. Once I turn it on, we're going to see the BPE extension. Actually, I already ran it, so we already see bpextension.bpe here uh, because I did already run it. So since we ran that, we turned it on, it created the file. Oh, let me go back because I show you it is. It is indeed 2 gig in size. You can see that right here. 
let's look at the configuration now. So we'll go ahead and run this and let's zoom into the config here now that we've actually got a little bit of information to look at. So the first thing we're going to see is the path. Where is that? Obviously we just created it so we know where it is. So that path is now filled in. Of course it does tell me buffer pool extension clean page caching is enabled. And you'll notice it's interesting that it mentions clean page here. So the one thing to remember about buffer pool extensions is it only stores clean pages. Dirty pages are still in memory. Those are not stored in the buffer pool extension. It tells me my current size uh, in K. And then, of course, you know, I translate that into gig. So we see that we've got two gig here. So pretty simple and easy to turn on. Most of the parameters are pretty simple. Not a whole lot to it. The one thing I am going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and select a bunch of data out of the AdventureWorks DW2016 database. And all I'm really trying to do is just grab a table as big as I possibly can in the hopes that this guy is going to go out there and put some stuff in the uh, buffer pool that we can look at. And this query here is going to allow us to inspect that. Now, I can't run it in this window because I'm still doing that big query, and it is going to run for a while. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this out. We're going to go ahead and throw that in new query window here so we can take a look at this a little bit better. I am selecting from SysDMS OS buffer descriptors. That's not a new DMV. It's been around. But what is new about it is this. There's a new column called is in bpool extension equal one. So this will tell me everything that is in the buffer cache. If I filter on this new column, I can find out which pieces are actually stored in the buffer pool extension versus what's actually stored in the buffer pool in RAM or our L1 cache. So that's very handy to be able to go in and take a look at that. So what I can do is I can run this query. Now, odds are it'll probably come back empty, and it does, uh, which means that this query, query is still executing. It's still grabbing a bunch of data, but it hasn't gone over that 2 gig limit. Remember, we told SQL Server, hey, you've only got 2 gig for your buffer cache. So until we start getting over that 2 gig, then we're not going to be able to see anything inside of the buffer pool. Now, what we could also do is I could change this to a zero if we wanted to see what was in the actual buffer pool while we're waiting. And we're going to get a bunch of stuff. And this just kind of breaks it down by database here. Uh, but we can see that, you know, the different page counts and the buffer size. We look at average read time and microseconds, all that kind of good stuff on a per database basis. But this is all what's in the buffer cache. This is in, in RAM, which we set for 2 gig, and you can see we're not really that close to filling this guy up yet. So nothing's actually shown up in the buffer pool extension just yet. So hopefully that thing will continue to run and show us some data here. And when it does, we'll have a better idea of exactly what is spilling over into the buffer pool extensions. So let's talk about um, some ways that we can monitor this. We can monitor this with a couple of different DMVs out there that we have. There's some uh, things that we've added into the uh, performance counters. There's quite a few of those. There's like five extended events. And then you've seen some of the DMVs here, right? So we've got a DMV that we can look at uh, just to see uh, what's going on with the buffer pool extension. And then of course, the OS buffer descriptors, which is not new, but we added that new column in there. So we kind of get a better idea of exactly what is in the buffer pool extension versus what happens to be in the buffer pool itself. Let's go back and see if it showed us anything yet. And there we have it. So it finally decided to pull up some data. So it finally spilled over to our buffer pool extension. So let's zoom in and just take a little bit. Oh, hang on. Sorry. take a look at what's in here. I've broken this down by database name. Uh, the one that we're playing with that we're querying is actually this guy right here, our AdventureWorks Data Warehouse uh, sample database. I can see that I've got about 5,000 pages in the buffer pool extension, which equates to about almost 39 meg worth of data so far. And average read time in order to read that out and in uh, microseconds is 23,345. And so we can kind of see that on a per database basis as 
the buffer pool begins to fill, then all the databases start going into the extension, which is kind of cool that we can see that happen. Now, for me, I'm not going to see a major performance gain here because I'm on a test laptop. It's all SSD, so I won't see a major gain here. But obviously in production you will when you've got stuff sitting on a spinning drive. And all of a sudden we're able to cache more out on an SSD drive. That's a pretty huge advantage. And as you can see, the way that we did this and implemented this, this was really simple and really easy to do. I'm going to go ahead and kill our query here. So when you're done, what you'll need to do here uh, to turn it off if you want to uh, at any point in time in the future is you click execute in order to turn this off. Very quick, very simple, and it does actually clean up after itself. So you'll notice looking here in my temp folder, my buffer pool extension file that is .bp is now gone, and I just have my test databases. So it does clean up after itself. It removes everything off of the drive that you happen to have put on there in your buffer pool extension file. Now the other thing that's interesting to note here is if I wanted to change something, like change the location of the file, I put new drives in, I needed to move it, I was doing a migration, whatever that happened to be, or I wanted to change the size of the buffer pool extension in any way, whether you wanted to grow it or shrink it, either way, you actually have to turn it off and turn it back on. So you can't really alter this on the fly. You've actually got to turn the extension off, and then you can turn it back on with the parameters that you choose. So I hope you guys have found this beneficial today. Very cool feature, very simple and easy to use. So if you've got a server that's experiencing a lot of memory pressure, that's a really great place to take advantage of this feature. No app changes, no code changes, absolutely nothing needs to change on the front end. It's a very simple backend change. Just add some SSD drives into your server, and then off you go. You can get this up and running. Again, if you ever have any questions on anything, feel free to shoot me an email. Put some comments down in the blog post. I'd be happy to get that back out to you. Uh, even if it's something that we want to test out in the lab, I'll put together a little demo and test it, and we'll go through that.